Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sherwood. My name is Carrie Fowler. I'm a member of the Vestry, and uh, I'll let me wait for the bells, and then I'll talk to you. So welcome again, and welcome to everybody who's watching us on Facebook Live. As I said, my name is Carrie Fowler. I'm a member of the Vestry, and I'd like to welcome you all to Sherwood Church and to remind you that whether you're sitting in the pews or you're with us on Facebook, we are all one body in Christ. Now, as is our custom at Sherwood, we start with our announcements, and the first announcement is to welcome back Reverend Canon Stuart Wright as our guest priest. Welcome, Reverend Wright. And he will be filling in for Mother Nancy, who's away this week. And then welcome to Krista Beveridge, who's our guest cantor this morning. Thank you to everyone who last week um, was involved in our first Earth Day giveaway. So thank you to the Beaver Dam Green Team. See you all. Thank you so much for that. It was such a success. And then Mother Nancy asked me to say that if you're new to Sherwood, whether you're worshiping with us here or on Facebook, and you'd like to be part of our community, please reach out to her. She'd be very happy to talk with you, and we'd all love to get to know you. So now let's just take a few moments of silence to settle ourselves and open our hearts to hear God in the hymns we sing, in the scriptures we hear, and the prayers we'll offer up this morning. I'm so glad you're with us.
Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> To his people on earth, Lord God among you let us pray O God whose son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever amen please be seated The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14 and 36 to 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. From the promise it is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him, and he testified with many. Other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and they are about to throw the thousand alcohol. So was the wrong reading? If you would, please read the, the new first reading, because it appears in the sermon. Okay. <laughs> Take two, right? So, so we'll go to this one, too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Try it again here. The first reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the food, the proceeds to all as any had need, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, and they ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today 
is Psalm 23. We will read responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. second reading from the book of Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. Then he was abused. He did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls, the word of God. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you. Lord Jesus said, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many times have we heard those words, the words of the 23rd Psalm? So holy, so powerful, but sometimes almost overdone, mechanically so, said by repetition, made into a religious tchotchke. It's easy to lose sight of what God is saying to us in these words. I learned the importance of the comforting words of the 23rd Psalm when I worked as a hospital chaplain intern one summer in Corpus Christi, Texas. One night, my first week there, I was paged to be by a dying man's web bedside. When I got there, he said, pray for me, Father. Luckily, I had grabbed this contemporary version of the Bible on my way out of the office, and so I opened to the 23rd Psalm and prayed in this very modern translation, which began, God is our animal caretaker. I will not have any unmet needs. And the poor dying man listened politely. When I got to the end, he said, thank you, chaplain. Now, why don't we pray it again, but do it right this time? Sometimes I think that our biggest danger as church is that we forget who we are and forget our words, the word, and in trying so hard to be so relevant, we have nothing left to say. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How can that be? We want everything. We want more money, more education, more prestige, a better car, a better looking body, everything to go our way all the time. We want it all. No, the psalm says, with the Lord your God as your shepherd, with him carefully and lovingly providing for you, you have all that you need. In our discontented culture of a million wants, Christians can say, I have God. I don't want anything else. God alone is enough. And God leads you and me, the psalm says, as a shepherd to green pastures beside still waters, besides the still waters of holy baptism, where he claimed each of you as his own. He leads you into places where you will be given green pastures for your souls. We don't know how to provide for ourselves. We eat junk food if it's up to us, and yet God leads us and provides us with rich nourishment we need, feeding us with his living word, giving us his body and blood, keeping you together as this little flock at Sherwood whom he lovingly cares for. And the psalm says he restores our soul restores what is wearied and worn down in us. The shepherd assumes that we will get weary. He knows that we will sometimes falter and fall. So we don't have to be strong all of the time. He restores us, carrying us when we need it, leading us in the paths of righteousness, because this shepherd makes us righteous. He makes us worthy to stand before our Father as a gift by grace alone. When we walk through that darkest valley, when that final valley of the shadow of death overcomes us, I will fear no evil, the psalm says, for thou art with me. Thou art with me. That is the gospel. It is in the name of that good shepherd, Emmanuel, God with us, thou art with me. When times are tough, when we are wearied and we don't know what to do next, when there's no easy answer and no guaranteed future, there's only one thing at the center to trust through death and hell, one thing that lasts, one thing to trust in. 
thou, thou art with me. And in the darkest place, in the valley of the shadow of death, when all false hope is lost, that's where we stop talking about God and start talking to God. At least that's what the psalm tells us. No longer any mention of he is, but thou art. Not talking about him, but saying you, Lord. It's in the valley of the shadows. It's where the God of Sunday school turns into the God of real life. In the valley of the shadows is where the God we learned the right answers about becomes the one who is our answer. Then, then thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and staff of the comforter's wooden cross, proving how far this shepherd will go to find us. He leaves all things behind. He will put himself in mortal danger. He will give his life for the sheep. He will bear any danger and take upon himself every punishment. This shepherd will stop at nothing in order to bring us back to himself. A priest friend of mine in Minnesota took his church group to the county fair a couple of years ago. And this church member came along with them, a farmer who raised sheep. Now this shepherd brought a few of his prize-winning sheep to display at the fair barns. But while the shepherd and that youth group and the chaplain were at the fair, someone broke in to the sheep barns at his home and stole his entire flock of sheep. A lifetime's work of building a herd, gone. Of course, the farmer was devastated. He set out to find his sheep to get them back. So he traveled from one county fair to the next all summer long until finally at the end of August he walked into a sheep barn and ten pens over a bunch of sheep started bleating and crying out and jumping and so whether by smell or sound they could tell it was him. The sheep had been re-tagged falsely identifying them as belonging to somebody else but they were his. And he knew it, and the sheep knew it. Someone he was telling this story to later said, Oh, come now, how could you be so sure they're just sheep? And the farmer got really quiet. And he said, No, I know my sheep, and they know me. Those are my sheep. He took them home to feed and water them. The shepherd knows you, and you all, you know his voice too. Together we follow him by continuing in the things that make for Christians. It's like the book of Acts tells us today, continuing in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayers. These are things that the book of Acts say make us Christians. That is, continuing in the teaching about our good shepherd Continuing in the studying, teaching, preaching, showing, living. All about this good shepherd who gave his life to take away the sins of the world. And continuing to live together in fellowship and sharing all the things in life together, sharing our lives in common, getting along with one another as one united flock. And then gathering around the breaking of the bread, sharing in the Holy Sacrament here, united with our shepherd and each other, and then caring for other sheep and the whole world through our prayers. When we do these things, then we are living as the flock that we are. Then we are following then we know the life that he has come to give us. I came that they may have life, the good shepherd says. I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. Overflowing, supersized, ever abundant life. 
And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. No matter the burdens you face this day or this week, no matter who wants to take you away, giving you a false tag that says you belong to somebody else, God prepares a table for you this day, a feast right before you, right here. Yes, your enemies may gather around you, but God lays on a feast. He's not worried, so why should you be? Now, of course, most shepherds kill the sheep to eat them. Our shepherd lets himself be killed and lets us feed upon him. A feast laid out, a six-course heavenly feast, a banquet laid right here to show us what he thinks of our enemies. And then if that wasn't enough, thou anointest my head with oil, olive oil, a sign of the Holy Spirit at work in the prophets, priests, and kings of old, oil that was used as a medicine in the ancient world, oil that we anoint the sick with and anoint those who are newly baptized with, Oil that is poured out on you, you who have a job to do for your God, you who have been healed, forgiven, chosen as his own, shining with sweet, dripping down oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely. Goodness and mercy will follow us. God's goodness, God's mercy will come after us, will run after us with God at the front and his goodness and mercy chasing us, nipping at our heels from the rear. And when we close our eyes and draw our last breath, then you know that the good shepherd, you who have been tended and carried led and followed by him all the days of your life, then the last promise of the 23rd Psalm shall at last come true for us all, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now may the peace of God which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, accordance with the, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. 
that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give grace, give us grace to do the will, all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer for any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We especially pray for those of our parish prayer list. Joe C., Chip, Raymond, Peggy, Sally E., Liz M., Kevin M., Lisa P., Victor, Joyce T., Kim, Bernie C., Tony, Midge, Jeff, Timothy, J., Alex V., Barbara, Joan L., Rachel, Doreen, Norma, and Virginia. We give thanks for the blessings of this life, including for those celebrating anniversaries as well as birthdays, especially Jack and Robin. Give to the departed eternal rest. We especially remember Tom Graff and his family who mourn his loss. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
you. All things come of thee, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, have man you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper, with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, 
and offering to you from the gifts you've given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, now and forever, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Let us together pray the prayer for spiritual communion. In unison, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Please be seated. Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Do you help, do you help with the wine? Thank you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are very members of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Christians all rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord of life life that cannot die, and sing with hearts uplifted by. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your name we bless, O risen Lord, and sing today with one accord at life laid down the life restored Alleluia 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 To God the Father God the Son To God the Spirit obeys one we sing for life in us begun Alleluia 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 As we go forth in the world refreshed and renewed we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation God commands us to enthusiastically cast our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exceptions. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, thank you, thank you.